Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I want to showcase a little memory game I have created in JavaFX. And I actually don't know exactly what this game is called, but I just saw it the other day and thought it was kind of interesting. And I therefore tried to recreate it in JavaFX, which I just did. So let me actually showcase. It's a basic memory game where the program shows an order. These buttons need to be pressed, and we then just need to repeat it. So at first, it tells us one button. This one, I got it correct. We then have two, so based on the same order. So now again, this one and this one. We then get three buttons. One, two, three. And then just keeps going. And then we keep expanding on this pattern, more or less. And then at some point, like now we get this, 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 this. This, but for example, in this next, next case, let me just showcase if we get it wrong. Then instead of having this green color shown, get a red color and I have this text simply just kind of like dummy text telling me how many I got right and it's wrong. And we lost it. We then simply just restart the game, start then again at one, and it then keeps going. So, relatively simple. Let me just quickly showcase inside scene builder where I have this set up with a V box containing three H boxes, containing my buttons to make sure it's in this perfectly even grid. And that's actually just very basic. We then for each button give them an ID. So first button is called button zero, next button called button one, and then all of the buttons are gonna trigger the same on action call called button clicked. So whenever any of the buttons are called, clicked, they will then call the same method, which will then, in my case, check which bottom am I. And then in this case, if I'm correct, based on like the pattern, which is another list, I would then turn green for half a second. Or if I'm not correct, I would turn red for half a second and the game would end. And of course, some text and the start button. But as I just talked about, the basic concept is simply that I have a few lists have one list containing all my buttons so I can access them and change the color and so on. I have another list containing just strings of the button IDs so I can get a random button each time. And I then also have a list empty at first which is kind of like the pattern. And then I have a few extra integers to keep track of like what's the pattern order so when actually showing for example the gray squares at the beginning of each round it would reset so it'd be told as you see here I have a random button picked based on actually just, just let's go through it. So we have these lists. Might be a bit confusing at first, but we have a bunch of lists, a bunch of integers, just keep track of where we add, what's the turn count, like what's the turn number, and then the counter, so how far am I at this specific turn? So at first, turn one, which means we have one square. We start with zero squares clicked, we then click one, counter goes up by one. We then have counter being equal to turn. We then go to next round and so on, for example. We then have all my buttons. We have the text. We then inside initialize, we simply just add all our buttons after they've been loaded on the screen to this buttons list. We then have the button clicked method, which is very essential. We then have the start method, which is called by this start button. And we then have a bunch of extra helper methods to kind of run most of it. And I'm not going to go through all the code line by line, but I'm going to try to talk about the basic concept. And in this case, I will leave a link in the description to a GitHub or GIST probably, where you can have a look at the code yourself. But just to mention quickly, a setup like this, where everything's in the same file, everything's inside the controller, it's not optimal. I just did it because it's the easiest way of doing it. But from a perspective of like great software architecture, this is not not the way of doing it. But just to showcase it's, it's doable and I actually think the game looks quite nice. Of course, there could be quite a few optimizations to make it better and more entertaining, but I am able to have this animation running, which animates based on a pattern and then check turn and so on and so on. So actually, let's just have a quick look at what happens. So when the start button is clicked, I first clear the pattern. So if we had a previous game running, we would have a pattern, which is kind of like the order of the buttons need to be clicked. 
We then add to our pattern, which is just an array list. Simply all this is just adding a random button to this array list. In this case, I also then print to the console just to keep track, as you can see here, of which buttons need to be clicked if I want to cheat. We then set the counter, so we kind of reset. So first turn and zero buttons have been clicked so far. That starts the game. Then when any of the buttons are clicked, I then simply check if the button clicked matches the position at the pattern we add. So let's say we need to click one button, button zero. We would then click. Our counter is then going to be pointing to zero because we are going to be clicking the first button. I will then simply check if the button clicked is equal to button zero. If that's true, that means we clicked on the correct button. We then simply change the text to correct plus the button number or the counter number, which is the same, just to understand where we add. We then have our button. We then access the button from the buttons list. We then change the color of the button, which is a helper method I created, which then simply takes the parameters of our button and then a JavaFX CSS color style. So we just simply set the base of the color or the base of the button. And if we just have a look at change button color, it simply checks in the button, the string containing the CSS styling for the button. We then set the style of the button, which means we'll be turning in this case, the button green. We then create a pause transition, which is just simply just something that's running for, in this case, half a second. And we then define that when our pause transition is finished, we would reset the button style to null. And that is what we just restart the game. When I click, the button is turned green, a pause transition is started, and then resets the color of the buttons after half a second. And because this is done individually on each button, I can also just click multiple and you can see we have multiple greens because they're not connected at all. And it's actually just the exact same method that's used when turning the buttons gray for like showing the pattern. We then again, just give it the button. We just have a list of patterns. If we actually just call this method show pattern, which then creates a pause transition because we wanted the green to be faded before we start showing the grays. But it simply creates a timeline, which with a one second interval runs as show next, which means color in the next button in the pattern gray for half a second. And it just simply calls this method every second for this amount of buttons that need to be in the next pattern. And we then simply do it like this, then run through this animation of showing all the, the colors of the pattern and the pattern is just i think i mentioned it a few times but it's actually just very simple to create the pattern it's just simply an empty list and then just simply adds a random button each time and then we add a random button and then we show the pattern and we thereby then create this game loop where we start the game select one random button show all selected patterns so in this case it's just one button we then click this button turn it green for half a second remove the green, and then after we have finished, so if this button was clicked as the last button in the pattern, so if you need to click on five buttons, if five buttons have been clicked, kind of like reset the round and show the pattern, or reset the round, add another button to the pattern and show the pattern again. I hope that's kind of clear, because it might be a bit confusing, but it's actually just this simple game loop or whatever you want to call it. And then as mentioned, we just check if the button is the next button in the pattern. If it is, change to green, go up the counters or how many buttons are we clicking. But then simply, if it's not the correct button, we just take this button, access it, and then simply turn it red and set the text to wrong. So for now, I'm technically not like ending the game or doing anything. You could actually keep playing. So let's say we start, I need to click on middle round two, middle, and down here, but instead of doing it right, or do right, wrong, right, it actually keeps going because it's actually nothing ending the game. But that is just a little quick program I created. I thought it was interesting to see if I could actually recreate this program in JavaFX. And as it turns out, I, I could.
I just thought it would be interesting and I wanted to share with you guys. So if you enjoyed this quick demonstration, please leave a like and subscribe and I wish you all a wonderful day.